I am Arun Agrawal and I'm a faculty member at the University of Michigan. I teach environmental studies and environmental politics at the University of Michigan. I believe there's a resurgence of work on the commons and in the ways in which people talk about the commons in recent years. And the reason for that, uh, like the governance of commons in practice, uh, cannot be attributed to a single individual or to a single factor. Just as a lot of individuals, a lot of different factors have led to an emergence of commons as a viable way of managing natural resources and of using common property arrangements to manage these resources. Similarly, the actions of a lot of people are responsible for the emergence of a much more vibrant and vigorous discourse around the commons. Some of this work has been done by academics, but there's also a lot of work on this being done by activists, by politicians in many countries, by even by uh, corporations and by uh, small-scale producers and farmers. Uh, the work of Eleanor Ostrom is clearly a focal point and has inspired a lot of people, but her work also built on the contributions of many researchers who think of the commons as a viable strategy to manage natural resources. So what is really special about the commons in India and about common property resources in India is that they are being managed sustainably despite substantial human population pressures and despite substantial market pressures, increasing levels of economic growth and government policies having a positive influence only to some extent. They still exist and they are still being managed sustainably and in many cases their extent has grown. That is really special because in many other parts of the world the reason common property resources exist is because there are very limited pressures on them for consumption. Some of the key challenges for managing the commons is the continued insistence of a market-based economy on increasing levels of growth and higher and higher consumption and on little recognition of local rights over natural resources. And in many cases, even governments who are obsessed with economic growth at any cost or unsustainable economic growth do not recognize the extent to which common property resources contribute to people's livelihoods contribute to people's incomes, contribute to their very existence. And I think this is one of the biggest challenges to the continued sustainability and existence of common pool resources. I think the biggest rays of hope and the biggest opportunities for the future of commons and for continued sustainability of commons is the substantial interest that many people have in the vitality and in the existence of these resources. So all around the world, governments have been forced to recognize that unless they, rec unless they are willing to accept people's ability and capacity to manage resources, these resources will not be sustainably managed. And, in, and so they have, people's movements have successfully led to changes in government policies towards greater, rec greater recognition of, of com communal rights. And so, in many parts of the world, people's movements have forced governments to recognize that local communities and local peoples have a right and the capacity to manage resources sustainably. And, these, and this recognition has led to changes in government policies, and that's perhaps one of the biggest rays of hope for, future, for the future of the commons, which is to say that people are invested and interested in sustainable resource management through common property arrangements. Common title or collective title and tenure to natural resources is very important for local populations because it grants them the assurance that what they do with these resources will be recognized and accepted by formal mechanisms of government. Common action is therefore enabled through common title to a substantial extent. But I would say that even together, these two things, common title and common action, are not enough. What is also necessary is a shift in how people think about common pool resources and how this thinking then translates into common action. Such transformations in thinking coupled with common title and common action 
are very likely to enable and to maintain the existence and sustainability of commons over the long period. Large-scale common pool resources pose particularly thorny problems for governance. And all forms of governance, whether they are market-based governance, government-oriented or government-focused actions, or communal action, will face obstacles and will face problems in, the, in ensuring the sustainability of these resources. So once again, I would go back to two things that are really important for the sustainability of these kinds of resources. One, collective action, and two, collective thinking. I think in combination, these two forms of human endeavors, collective action and collective thinking, can overcome market failures when it comes to the management of large-scale natural resources, such as the atmosphere. Securing resource rights is critical for the long-term viability of resources themselves and for the long-term future of human beings. If you don't allow people to manage resources and if you don't allow them the formal recognition of their rights to manage resources, they will do it on their own. You, and when I say you, I mean governments or when I, when I say you, I mean formal systems of management, they are local populations don't need the permission of formal government mechanisms to manage resources themselves or to manage them sustainably. Land being taken away from small farmers or from small producers is one of the gravest injustices that one can imagine. Land is the basis of livelihoods for these people. And without land, we are condemning them to a future of low levels of nutrition and starvation. The study of planetary boundaries tells us that there are strict limits to what people can do with the environment. At one level, I think the study of planetary boundaries is a very important concept to keep in mind because it tells us that we cannot overuse the resources that we have on this planet. But I would also say that the study of planetary boundaries is mistaken when it tells us that these limits are too strict because we must also take into account the likelihood of human ingenuity overcoming what we currently imagine as a planetary boundary and these boundaries shifting with changes in what human beings do. Green governance is often imagined as sustainability for the future. But I would say that green governance that only thinks of sustainability without taking into account justice and without taking into account poverty and without taking into account inequality is a failure. Green governance must incorporate justice, equality, and sustainability with attention to people's needs. I believe there has been a resurgence of common discourses and practices related to the management of common pool resources in the recent past. And just as the management of commons is a result of the actions of many, many people, the resurgence of discourses and practices around the commons in a, in a similar manner are also a result of the actions of many people. Clearly, a focal point for these practices and these conversations and discourses has been the work of Eleanor Ostrom. But we should not forget that even her work built on the contributions of many other scholars who came before her. She continues to inspire and she continues to help people who are working on the commons despite the fact that she is no more with us. But she would be the first to say that, resurge that the resurgence of discourses on the commons is the result of the contributions of many, many people.